hello and welcome to yet another awesomeness of Marriage Matters. My name's Andy. And I'm Joe. And this is awesome. So if you want to not miss out on all the wonderful stuff that we are doing, particularly Marriage Matters, if you're watching or listening or reading to this right now, then you can like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and the best thing as ever is... Sign up to our newsletter. Sign up to the newsletter called Berry Bites with a Y. Because you can. <laughs> Be- with a Y because why not? <laughs> was the actual phrase oh fair enough oh. excellent anyway so here we are for another episode we hope you're doing okay and um, do feel free to get in touch with us if you've got some topics you'd like us to look at or questions whatever you mm. can let us know there's loads of ways loads of social media facebook twitter instagram youtube vimeo tumblr website email wow so if you want to get in touch you can't <laughs> complain you can't that's you can. right So yeah, Marriage Matters, another episode, and we've called it Work It Out. So we're looking at work and where that the place it um, it has on our lives when we're married. So we could be in work when we get married, um, we might not be, um, we might both work or not work, and there are different seasons, aren't there, in times of our marriage. So we thought it'd be really interesting to look at how that works out how work works in a marriage. Um, We've been through periods of unemployment as well, and that's a really tough place to be. I know people work away for long periods of time, and that can be hard. Although, arguably, some people will find it more difficult being stuck together. And we think about the COVID a couple of years where basically people were having to to be together a lot more, weren't they? Um, And so it's just thinking about that, I think, work-life balance, don't you think? Yeah, work-life mm. balance is a pretty common phrase I think mm. that we hear around. We we kind of band it around, you know, work-life balance. And mm. I think we tend to assume that it's about how much work we do and when we do it. But I think, especially as Christians, it needs to be more than that because there's more to work than work. Yeah. And there's more to life than work. And there's more to life. There's more to it yeah. than just your working life. Because then we we have to think about, well, what are you going to do with your social time? Because there are Mm. parts of our life where we don't have any choice, in a sense. We can choose not to work, but, you know, within context. We don't have a choice to go to work for a nine o'clock start, so we have to leave at eight o'clock in the morning. But, Mm. well, what are you doing before eight o'clock? That's your time. So what are you doing in those down times, those times when you can choose what you wish to do? Yeah. That also comes into it as well around the work-life balance, the so-called. And we have looked at other episodes around family, um, the wider family and friendships and things. But this is specifically around working and where that fits in. And, you know, sometimes maybe we can spend too much time at the office, as it were. Um, and other times maybe we, we need to spend more or, or do it differently or, you know, change jobs or, you know, just just find more time for our spouse. Um, so it's looking at kind of what problems have we've had along the way and how we've solved them around work. Um, I'm sure there's lots of different problems that come up with work. I mean, there are times when it gets really busy, isn't it? And you need to be in the office more time. But if that becomes the norm, that's that's the issue, isn't it? It is. I think COVID was interesting because a lot of people were, in effect, forced to work from home, perhaps Mm. for the first time. Some firms have thought, this is a lot better. Some employees have thought, wow, this is amazing. I can be at home mm. and get my job done and I can go for a run and do the washing. And <laughs> it's opened us up to the old way of working before modern working, kind of before your industrial revolution, where people would work from home. That was their job and their home. They would conduct yeah. business and that was quite normal. So in a sense, what COVID did was really take us back you know, 100 years or 200 years to how we always used to work and have them for thousands of years where the home is not Mm. just the centre of the family, home is the centre of the workplace. Yeah. Proverbs 31, for example. Yeah. Proverbs 31 wife doesn't mention a towel block. No. Or the office. No. Just saying. (laughs) Take a break. Yeah. Physical training is good. But training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. The point of this scripture is that while physical training is good, it is beneficial for us. It keeps us fit, it keeps us healthy. It's not nearly as beneficial as spiritual training and all that makes up training for godliness, such as reading our Bibles, praying and going to church. And that is the point of endurance. It is to show how we can maintain self-discipline and how we can endure through our training for godliness with that in mind go check it out
So this episode of uh, Marriage Matters is about looking at work, uh, working that out, as it were. And obviously throughout the Bible, we've got some great things in there to help us along the way. And it begins really with work being quite important. Um, it's, it's kind of our purpose. If you speak to people who have been unemployed for any length of time, they feel like there's no purpose. So work is really important. Um, it helps us all. We all need something to do. And of course, we need to provide for our families. There's a scripture that talks about if we don't uh, work, we won't eat something like that, <laughs> isn't there? Shall we I, got it there. Shall I read the actual scripture? Oh, actual one. <laughs> it's not that one. So it's really important work um, for the families, with the families. Um, what's me li- oh, there it is. You got it. Yeah, for even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. Usual delicateness yeah. from Paul. So work is important. We need to provide for our families. Um, and also it gives us a sense of purpose. Um, and it's really tough when you haven't got a job or COVID was a tough time as well because uh, there were people who couldn't work or had to work very differently and, and life got very difficult for many people. Um, so work is really important, but it's, um, yeah, seeking God's direction on how that works in a marriage, isn't it? Um, you Which know, is we... the point of marriage matters. <laughs> matters of the marriage that's matter, including working. Working is part Which of that, Which is isn't part it? of marriage unless you're retired, which is yeah. different. Absolutely. So, um, so right from the beginning, we've, work is important. Yep. God's placed us in the garden to to, to work. Um, there was the curse, which it became a bad thing, didn't it? That work yep. would be hard, which we see that in life, don't we? There are difficulties, but still, there's something really pure and good about working, isn't there? There is, and working can take many, many shapes. So, uh, I mean, for me, um, our oldest is 18, so not long after he was born, I became a stay-at-home dad. Yeah. A lot of people, we've touched on this, but let's go here again. A lot of people says, oh, wow, yeah, it must be great sitting at home playing computer <laughs> games. I mean, seriously, what? Um, no. <laughs> stay-at-home parenting no. is not a doddle. It's not an easy thing. And um, I've driven tipper trucks, which is probably... The, phys- the most physically demanding job I've ever done. Hmm. You do your you minimum 12-hour days, um, and it's really, really hard work. Hmm. Jumping into being a stay-at-home parent was harder. <laughs> so don't ever say being a stay-at-home parent is a doddle. It's not. Oh, what's that film with Van Diesel who's, who's struggling, isn't it? Like, And then you hear the jokes, don't you? Like, oh, yeah, I can cope with the war zones and fighting and all that, but yeah, put them yeah. in front of a child and they just don't know what to the do. The pacifier. <laughs> That's a funny film. <laughs> Yes, this special operative person who has children for a bit and, you know, falls in a heap. <laughs> and I think this is the thing. Work is whatever God is calling you to yeah. do. And for us, um, our working balance, if you like, has been predominantly, around mm. having babies, for Joe to work full time. And I've been with the, mm. with the kids at home. And that means I can do other things. So I've never been idle. Mm. Never, I mean, people have, I don't think you could ever accuse me of being lazy. Nope. Um, maybe you need to slow down and do less, but that's a, <laughs> we'll come on to that. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that been our working pattern. Mm. Um, you might be in a situation where you both need to work and earn an income. Uh, we've been quite blessed. We've made choices. I mean, mm. we've made sacrifices in order that we only need one wage. It's not always possible, mm. but we've gone off, out of our way so we only need one wage because that's what was our intention was mm. with having children. Yeah. You may not be able to do that. You may be living in an area, maybe you've got debt you didn't intend to have you might have a, a mortgage but suddenly it's not your house isn't worth as much and now you have to both work we've met folks like that so this is our model um but it's not the right model it's not no. the best model it's just the best and right model for mm. us as a couple and that's the point isn't it it's, it's about making sure that you journey with god at the center isn't yes. it um we might have some great ideas about what we think we should I be have doing some really good ideas that god <laughs> never seems to want to go with no. Um, and we, we, yeah, we do, we need to pray about it. You need to listen to God um, because he could take us in, in very different directions that, to what we think. Um, what do they always have the phrase, don't they? Sort of um, 2.4 children and there's a sort of conveyor belt of life. You get work and then you have children and you buy a house and all of that. And this is all very good thing, good stuff, isn't it? but it isn't things. necessarily how God wants us to live our lives. And so, you know, if you, if you want to follow God, it's about walking by faith and that... <laughs> That can be quite scary, but it's a it's a very exciting lifestyle, and I think we've we've tried to live by faith, we've, haven't we've, we? We've we've had what you could describe as an exciting lifestyle, <laughs> but it means we can help others. So when I yeah. saw someone the other day saying we've just been asked, well, evicted from our house, mm. nothing wrong with them. The landlord wants the house back for the for their children, and what am I supposed to do? I was able to genuinely reach out and say, I know what it's going, what you're going through. I know what it's like to have a letter under the door mm. saying you've got 
X amount of weeks or months and you've got to find a new home. You've got no money for a deposit. You don't know where to live. Mm. You've got a life established. And we've been here so many times, it's ridiculous. And God's always provided because we go back to him. Mm. Um, but I think part of that is... Uh, I'm very careful when I say it's a blessing from God or whatever, but I think because we've tried to work in the right way and tried to put God mm. first, whilst we've had those um, white knuckle moments, mm. actually God's always pulled us through and we've never fallen out of the boat into the rapids. <laughs> Come close. Got wet. Yes. But it's fine. We got through it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to jump into Colossians 3.23. It says this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, Mm. not for men. And then verse 24, same sentence. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Mm. And I think this is the point. Whatever job we do, it's very easy to be on this conveyor belt of life. And we get a job. We have our 2.4 kids. and We get a car and a nicer Mm. car. Move to a nice area. Get a better house. Mm get a holiday, a better holiday, maybe a holiday home. This is this is life. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that may not be God's best for you. Mm. Um, we know people who work and don't have much time for ministry, but their work pays for ministry for yeah. other people. And this is the point. Um, this is why what we do, it needs to be for God. My work now is the Berry Bunch family. Uh, it's the website. I spend almost all of my time on this mm. if it's not cooking, cleaning, and um, looking after the boys with home mm. education. So this is my work it doesn't pay Mm -hmm. at all but that's not the point i'm working for the lord and god blesses us in different ways yeah i suppose it's like anything uh, when you make decisions is it bringing you closer to god is this going to help the relationship you have uh, in your marriage isn't it like everything you know is this activity is this friendship is this work um and 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 there will be times where work actually might be taking you away from your spouse wouldn't it and maybe it needs to. I mean, your business is in trouble. You're not going to say, oh, well, I'm having date night. Yeah. You're yeah. going to get your computer out at 10 o'clock and work till four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. When we had an online business that uh, we were selling stuff all around the world, I'd be up till four o'clock doing mm. updates on the website because it was the best time to do it. Yeah. Internet was faster and clearer. People generally weren't on the internet. So it was the perfect time. Mm. We're going to have to make sacrifices yeah. to get to where we're getting to. However, the difference is between is that your norm? Are you mm. always rushed and pressured and stressed? In which case, that's not God's best for you. Mm. I can say that quite happily. But there are times when we'll need to do that. It yeah. doesn't mean to say we loaf about doing nothing either. There's, no. There is a balance to be struck here. Yeah, you are. God says uh, his plans are to prosper us, not harm us. And I just think about that phrase that often comes up, isn't it? Like ships in the night. So often couples will talk about they're both working and they're trying to sort of balance it all and with the kids and and looking after them. Um, So they might be working different shifts. And and that often, if it can't be helped if they're in similar sort of professions. Um, But yeah, if that, like you say, Andy, if it goes on for too long, that's quite worrying for a family to continue like that, isn't it? I remember when we were first married, we've touched on this a few times, but you were working shifts, 12 hours, 15 hours, Mm. six, seven days a week. I was a trucker, so I was working away. I could be away for a week at a time, you know, and it was was really hard having a marriage where the only relationship you have is with the phone, contacting the other person's phone, yeah. and you're leaving messages or voicemails, and there isn't any actual contact. And no. I'm stopping for a break, and Joe's at work, or she's asleep, and I'm free. And <laughs> you know, it's you, you end up having a relationship via voicemail. That's okay for a time. Yeah, it's not yeah. evil, but at the same time, it's not God's best permanently. Yeah, because you need to find creative ways of, of engaging with one another. So at one point, I'd work a late shift. Uh, Joe, we'd had a baby, so Joe was at home. I was out to work for a, for a year or so. I was working like a late night shift, and you connected with me by phone quite a bit because I could. Um, mm. But also, I had um, little little biscuits, little cheese biscuits, and you'd make me a little cheese on biscuit thing <laughs> in a little tub, and there'd be bits of biscuits and cheese and yeah. a little message, and it, it made me feel like I was at home with my family. Yeah. So there are some really simple, creative ways of doing that. Yeah. Can we jump into one Thessalonians? Yeah. Because that's it's got me excited. Okay. At 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11 says this, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Mm. Now, you can twist this in a few different ways which aren't helpful, but the bit I think that is helpful for us is we need to do what we do for work. Mm -hmm. So 
when we say working in this context, we're talking about the thing you choose to do that pays you money. Mm. Maybe it's working for somebody, maybe it's working for yourself. It's still a choice. You don't mm. have to do it. You know, no one's going to force you. Maybe that is your situation. That's different. But we're talking about what you're choosing to do and what you're not choosing to do. And what you do for work should be um, within the context of doing it for the Lord. And when you understand the context of this, a lot of this was for slaves. So if you're working for a company, you are biblically, the words don't quite mesh today in English, but you're basically a slave. You're working for somebody who is a master Mm -hmm. who tells you what to do. Now, we don't like the word slave because it has connotations which perhaps aren't very helpful. Mm -hmm. But when the Bible's talking about slaves, that's basically when you're working for somebody, you're under their orders you're working Mm. for them um that needs to be for god don't work for them don't Mm. work for yourself don't work for bettering your situation in life work for god because everything else follows after that it's about perspective it's about prioritizing Mm. but the bit that really struck me was make it your ambition to lead a quiet life to mind your own business and to work with your hands that's the niv uh, Mm. rendition and i quite like that because it's very easy to interfere with people. My way is the best way. Live your life like me. Mm. As a stay-at-home dad, I can say I have met many stay-at-home mums who are bigoted, judgmental, rude, unpleasant at me because I'm the wrong sex, which mm. is kind of mad. Um, and I've had some really unpleasant encounters in that way. Mm. All you can do as a married couple is what you believe God is calling you to yeah. do. Minding your own business means if it's not against the scriptures as a mm. Christian, then shut up. Yeah, absolutely. Pray for them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't criticise them, shun them and turn your back on them. Yeah. That's not going to help them. But it's uh, working with your hands just as we told you. So, mm. you know, crack on with it. Get on with the work. Proverbs 31, which we didn't want to go into because there's too mm. much in there. That's like a series of series. Um, but the Proverbs 31 wife was getting up early yeah. and, and she was doing this and she was doing that and she was selling this and making some money. And mm. if you want to understand the work-life balance, go and read Proverbs 31 <laughs> because although... That's not really a day in the life of. No. <laughs> That's more like a 10-year cycle in the life of. Yeah. Um, what the, the Proverbs 31 wife teaches us is the importance of actually, if you want to achieve something, how what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve that? Yeah. I'm, I'm drawn towards um, thinking about Jesus because he was a carpenter. He worked. Yes. Um, and then there was a time of, of, of pure ministry, wasn't there? Where, yeah. But he always, um, always, always busy, never idle, always, um, you know, telling people about himself and the kingdom. Um, and so there's a time when he was working in it, like for money, mm-hmm. and a time when he he had his his ministry. When I he fished get, for his money, yeah, literally. No, that was a, yeah, really cool. And so there's different times and, and things. But I also reminded of the fact that what is it they often say is you're not you're not at the end of your deathbed going to say oh I wish I'd stayed longer at the office. You know, but sometimes we do. People do stay at the office because they don't want to go home. They don't want to face things or they've got into bad habits or they're afraid of their boss, aren't they? And we really should be, like you say, pleasing God and, and, and looking to him. The, the, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, isn't yeah. it? And so if we're fearing people that we work for, fearing our boss, we're not really walking in faith. And then we could end up, you know, actually spending more time in the office and not enough time with our family. I remember one job I had was at a car auctions and it was late the area director had come and there was some stock check thing something was going on I don't yeah. know what was going on but there was real pressure and stress and anyway that we were all staying really late one night and I think I want to go home I shouldn't I'm not getting paid for this wow. and I should have gone home um, but we realised that there were two people that had left and they'd left hours ago and when we got to the next day it's like where the heck were you we were there till 10 o'clock at night I think it was about half past 9 quarter to 10 exhausted and I go where were you well we asked if we could go home well, what are you worried about your job? I was worried about my family. Aww. And that was a real <laughs> shock, actually, because we were there working away fearing this area director for our jobs. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't have done because he couldn't force us. You know, if he'd have mm. sacked us, we'd have yeah. been able to sue the company for wrongful dismissal. But we all stayed, and mine was, well, I don't want to lose my job because I just mm. got it. But a lot of the others were trying to climb the ladder, which I wasn't especially interested in there. Mm. But they were trying to climb the ladder of getting higher, and, well, we want to be seen. Yeah. Well, if you're the senior manager, then maybe. But if you're just somebody who answers the phone, mm. go home. You're not needing it. And, and people will play on you and bully you and make you feel pressured to do what mm. you don't have to do. Another job, we were expected to turn up on a Saturday to get the trucks loaded. Mm. So I did, until I realised I didn't need to. <laughs> so we do these things, don't we? And yeah. it interferes, and it's not always healthy. Yeah, I think it comes back to the, our, our heart, isn't it? You do it for the Lord. 
Um, Do it for God. Pray about it. Think about this. <laughs> How do people talk to you normally? Do they talk in burning bushes? Sit. Sit. Fetch. <laughs> so what I say back. <laughs> what do you say back? You took the stick. Get it yourself. <laughs> Oh, I'm here. Oh, hello, Dave. Um, oh, I think we got the same problem as last week. I can't see you. Uh, have you opened your eyes? Yes, I've opened my eyes. Oh. You name it, he could play it. Uh, pipe organ. Pipe organ, yeah, with all the Lots of buttons, like a spaceship. Spaceship. <laughs> yeah, you're looking good. Have you done something to your hair? I had my hair sorted. <laughs> Went to the dog groomers. Oh, brilliant. You look great. It's good Thank to you. see you. Do you know what your name means, Dave? Dave. Dave. It just means Dave. Yes. Well, I looked it up and it's short for David and it means beloved. It means you're lovable. Long for duh. <laughs> Long for duh. Big long stick to help him uh, protect sticks. his sheep. You like sticks. sticks? You like yeah, sticks? Throw a stick. And we're back. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here again. <laughs> uh, for tips and resources section. Yes. Hence the, you know, the lovely hearts falling down. <laughs> or they're falling up, which is a bit weird. But anyway, interesting gravity. Yes. So tips and resources. So working can be really hard. Working mm -hmm. is really important. We should be working. And um, God expects us to be working. And Paul was really clear, if you don't work, you don't eat. Mm. So there is some pretty harsh stuff in there mm. but if we have to work that means god's going to give us help in how to work mm. and hence tips and resources yeah. a nice segue yeah, yeah see so uh, one book that i bought now this is these are specific to children and families however i will say this at the start if you're single or and you're watching this uh if you're married and you're not being able to have children maybe your children have moved on still really good because you just changed the word child for spouse Mm. And you can actually have some fun. So uh, it was Rob Parsons, who's part of, who set up Care for the Family, mm. which is a really good um, charitable organization in the UK. There's lots and lots of training, really good mm. stuff. Well, Rob Parsons wrote a book. Um, I didn't know about Care of the Family or the fact he was a Christian guy. I just saw this book in uh, in a bookshop. And um, oh, there you go. So uh, 60 Minute Father, a bit older cover now. It was just a high street bookshop. And I bought this, mm. the 60 Minute Father, because... I was going to be a dad and I thought, uh -huh, what are you supposed mm. to do? Really, really good, simple tips on things you can do to have fun, which are sometimes a bit naughty. <laughs> I, I love the story. We heard Rob Harson speaking one time and he had this guy come up to him and he was saying, I followed your advice because this, I'll give you a spoiler from the book, one of the spoilers. He said, uh, have a film night on a, on a school night. This is So you can convert this away from children if you haven't got kids. Do it on a night when you've got to be up early for work. The whole point is to have some fun that you need to have <laughs> at a time when you're not supposed to. That's what makes it good. Anyway, this guy said, we did what you said. And well, we had vomit on the bed sheets at two o'clock in the morning. And my five-year-old was, you know, having a mess and it, it all got wrong. And Rob Parsons is thinking, I'm, I'm going to get sued here. And this guy says, it was the best night ever. We're doing it again. <laughs> and this is the thing. When we do stuff that's fun, like some of the ideas in here, yeah. we've do, I don't know how many pancakes they've made in the last 18 years, mm. but we've done pancakes on a Sunday night for so long. I mean, our oldest is 18. Mm. You know, like I said, it's not just for little children. Um, if the kids weren't around, I'd do it with Joe. Mm. But there are some really good tips about how to engage with people and at one level. Okay, it's written for children, um, but how to engage with other people in a yeah. really good way. And there's a follow-on, which is a 60-minute family, mm. which is about families. 
which I haven't oh. read actually, but I'm reading that. Yeah, so I suppose we're looking at um, the other tips is about how do you cut yourself off from work? I mean, there's lots of sort of uh, tips and ideas about, especially now that we're working from home. Can I you... give you one really, really quick, easy answer? What's that? Turn your work phone off. Yeah, absolutely. And your emails. Yeah. Um, there's a, I mean, I, I work from home sometimes and I find it difficult because I do like the commute to switch off. And so we often joke about going walking around the block as though you're switching off. But you need to find a way to switch off and switch into your family. Uh, and sometimes it can only be for a short period of time if you're busy. And so one of the things that Andy does is is makes me he gets up early with me and you make me a coffee, don't you? So when I'm at work, I'm drinking my coffee and I'm reminded of you, which is some of the things that you've been saying earlier about some of the things that I would make put, put make be lunches and put a little we, note inside. We actually inside. do what we suggest. <laughs> These aren't just random things. Yeah. So there are things that help us, um, and obviously. So Sort of staying in touch, you know, sending messages in the in the when you get a chance, uh, a short text message or, or or quick phone call if there's if there's a possibility. So it's just keeping some something small to keep us keep us together, really, even when we have to work and we can't be together. Anning the flames. Absolutely. And one of the ones I remember, I mean, people who are in the military probably know how to do this better than any of us, but I remember a family whose um, the dad was away and they would keep a, a candle lit, wouldn't they? Yes, they would. <gasps> I love that idea. So the candle was always lit while dad was away. Um, and it's just like he was there in the room. They hadn't forgotten about him. I love yeah, they that. Did. They had dinner and they lit the, cam- the, yeah, the candle every beautiful. night. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I just love that. So there's little things that we can do to remember each other and, and even though we need to we have to work <laughs> because working is important we do yeah. need to work yeah. it's not a bad thing no <laughs> so if you've got any other tips and resources let us know but that's yeah. a few of the things we do Absolutely. one little quick tip um, don't write on a piece of paper a love note to your spouse and put it in between the sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> because it will go soggy we had a yeah. friend who did that and it, it didn't work Ew. that had been the sandwiches <laughs> so it's a nice gesture <laughs> you know, laminate it or something or put it separate, but don't put it in, in the bread. Broken Dreams and Hope is a new book, my first, very, very first book that I've ever written. And it's all based out of the fact that in life, we have hardships and we have difficulties. We have things that will break us physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. There are these things that can come along that can cause us immense hurt and pain. Maybe we've made a mistake, we've done something wrong, we have to face the consequences of that. We get broken. Maybe we've just been caught up in a tragic accident and we've been accidentally involved in something that was nothing to do with us. It breaks us. Broken Dreams and Hope is a book that I've written specifically because I've been through some difficult times. I've been broken. But despite being broken, there was hope. And that hope has a name. Broken Dreams and Hope is all about the fact that no matter how broken we may have been, there is still hope hope and that hope has a name and that name is jesus christ welcome back to our final part our takeaway our end of our marriage matters episode on the take work away. it <laughs> work it out working and where that balances between in, in in a relationship um whether you both work whether you there are times of unemployment whether you work away whether you work together Retired. we didn't actually yeah we didn't talk much about working together in the same like some people have family businesses working together all kinds of things there is no like andy said earlier there's no right or wrong it's, it's what's right for you as a family yes. so one might stay at home one might not both go out to work might be part-time whatever it, however whatever works for you as a family but we know that work is important we know that we need to work in order to provide for our family whatever works for you you can work it out (laughs) i've been thinking about that one oh my goodness (laughs) that's the takeaway is it what are you taking away from this then andy well (laughs) i don't know (laughs) what am i taking away i think it's a reminder of it's important to have fun when you can yeah um so one of the things that we've done and we've we've talked about date night i'm not going down that road you can watch read listen to the episode instead uh, but date night you know it's important to do that and that's going to have different seasons at different times mm-hmm. when you've got uh, two teenagers date looks they're not looks very different you can't have you know a romantic night in the lounge quite the same with two teenagers coming mm-hmm. through for food mm-hmm. over all night time can't get intimate in that sitting can you so you no. it's going to change what you do and how you do it and and that includes the work as well because work you know there's going to be times when you're exhausted from work I remember coming home from work sometimes and Joe wouldn't even kiss me until I'd had a, a shower. <laughs> uh, we were shifting um, asbestos out of a building. So by the time I'd finished and got home, I, I was 
I was needing to be cleaned, preferably with a jet wash for a distance. So there's going to be these different seasons, but there are still ways of connecting. And coming back to what I said in the tips and resources, turn your phone off mm. if it's a work phone. Um, because you don't need to be doing that. And it is mm. one of the things that you've been working through, Joe, in your work is um, how, how do I block, how do I get done what I want to? I need to block off time. Mm. And you need to block off time in your marriage too, because otherwise your work encroaches. And COVID's had lots of good mm. and lots of negative uh, consequences. One of the negatives is bringing work home, people who've never done that before. Now they've got a computer at home. They've never had mm. that perhaps um, everyone's got a laptop now, virtually, it seems, so they can work remotely. And that's great. But how do you switch off? Mm. So um, if you're in a, in a particular environment and we've experienced this as well, you might find that colleagues are doing work on the Saturday afternoon outside when they're having a barbecue. It's like mm. y you need to switch off. And it's really important to have times when you are not working. Yeah. God worked for six days. Um on building the earth six days at night time mm. there was nothing much going on it was saying genesis but in the daytime he was super busy and then sunday mm -hmm. he stopped and that cycle is something we've got to do yeah so what's your takeaway well i was just thinking about creating boundaries really i mean children need boundaries and, and i think we as adults we, we still don't don't always get it right so we need to sort of you need to have a conversation with your um other half about how work's going to work Spouse. Other off. No, spouse. <laughs> spouse. We keep telling ourselves off we shouldn't use the word other off. Why not? Because I'm not another off, we're one. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're one. Okay, we're not we're two ones, we're no, one off. That's old. two. <laughs> you told me off. Oh, did I? Oh, fair enough. I'm just reciprocating. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, what was I saying? I don't I don't know. know. <laughs> Boundaries. Boundaries, yeah. So, um, you know, we need to be able to tell each other off if, it, if we're working too hard or too long. Um, but at the same time, we need to give each other space if we do need to work a little bit longer. Um, and it's about sort of, you know, talking about that and making sure it's not become a habit. But um, we can get into bad habits and we think, oh, I'll just do a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, and so it's about making each other accountable aren't, aren't we really and yeah, saying yeah. hang on a minute that's too long or you haven't you know seen the kids this week or we haven't had any time together and so it's about making sure you get that balance isn't it and talking yeah. to each other i think it's interesting you can get a bit tetchy with each other tetchy is a bit aggravated mm. agitated yeah uh, and sometimes like, well, what's wrong with that person and, and you just haven't had a cup of tea together yeah it can be as simple as just yeah. actually stopping deliberately on purpose together to have a cup of tea mm. if you're english Maybe not I mean, tea. The thing is, also, it's uh, it makes sense to spend time with each other because that is going to... It's like uh, they, they always say, make sure you have a lunch break, make sure you have a break, because that is more... You'll be more productive when you yeah. get that rest. It is true. In the same way, if you spend time with your family, if you have fun, you will be better at your job, won't you? So it's yeah. it's actually... Isn't, it's, it's not good for you not to have that time with your family and not to have those chats because you won't be as productive. So it's a, it's a win-win. But what's the hardest point in your life for me working too much? And how did you deal with it well when uh, I was doing too many hours? Perhaps when we had a business. Um, yeah, that was the hardest. How did it? you lovingly correct me? I don't remember. Do you remember then? Yeah, I used to say, shut up and turn it off and go to bed. <laughs> it's pretty simple, really. <laughs> well, I thought you liked it to be told directly. <laughs> I like direct. Sometimes, the yeah, no, it's fine. We've had those times, haven't we, yeah. where we just... We're doing too much. I remember came in to you, you're working from one one day and I asked you a question and you kind of snapped at me and you were so intensely, fiercely working. It's like, Joe, you really need to unplug. I think I actually took your hands off the keyboard at one point. It's like, let's come on, dear. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Because the thing, you can get too focused though. And it's not, you're not deliberately, and you weren't being horrible to me. You were just so focused with such a massive workload. Yeah. It took me to actually pull you out of the room. Yeah. Because I love you and faced you. But I've got this to do and this to do. You yeah. also need to get some fresh air. Let's yeah, go catch absolutely. some vitamin D. Yeah. We need to look after each other when it comes to work. It's a long-term investment. <laughs> well, it's true. It's, it's true. It's true. Till death is too part. I don't yeah. want you to be too knackered at 75. <laughs> there you go. Work it out. And sing the song if you want to, which we're not going to do. <laughs> Joke out with the title. I said, oh, that's a song. No, don't sing it. Don't, don't sing it. it. Don't sing it. <laughs> Yeah. What's that friend of ours calls it? Musical Tourette's. He just started with these songs. Oh, I can't stop. So there you go. Work it out. Working is important. We should be working. It's important to work. Mm -hmm. And if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. However, in our work, we should be focusing on God mm -hmm. and doing it for him, not for personal gain. Mm -hmm. um, and do it in the right heart. Yeah. And include your spouse where you can. Yeah. That doesn't. I can't see what Joe does at work because it's, you know, it's quite private. But that doesn't mean to say I'm not part of what she does. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
when you joined a particular thing a long time ago, I remember being in a meeting and this very important person came in and spoke about all these new recruits. And they said, the thing is, when they join, they're joining a family. And when they join the family, their family join as well, whether they want to or not. Yes. So you're part of this work. So although I never actually went out with Joe doing that particular job, it was quite poignant, actually, mm. that, that your family members, your brother, your father, your sister, your children, they are part of this yeah. job because we're part mm -hmm. of a much bigger family. And it was true. Yeah. So I sometimes used to go to the pub with Joe and her colleagues and I was... It felt like I was part of a family. Yeah. So that's okay too. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> have you finished? We have. There Thanks you go. for joining us. My <laughs> name's Joe. Yeah. Uh, my name's Andy. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye for, now. for now. There are loads of ways to stay in touch with the Berry Bunch. The best thing you can do is to visit our website sign up to our newsletter and you can be sure to always stay up to date with our latest news videos posts and updates on our seasonal events like us on facebook where we hang out and post extra stuff to encourage and inspire you subscribe to our youtube channel and be the first to see our latest brand new videos and resources we're on instagram too and share extra photos when we're out and about if you've seen something you've enjoyed, why not share it with a friend and brighten their day too? And if you want to be part of the Berry Bunch family ministry and help us as we continue to provide free resources for people to stream, share, download and use, you can do so at Patreon by supporting us financially each month.